And through labeling, we attach values. So for example, remember when a child goes near the fire or goes near a, a knife, the mother goes, ah, don't touch that. Okay, so there is no good and bad in the outer world. There is perception and filtering of values that is coming through socialization. Okay, so we perceive the outer reality. We give value and judgment to our outer reality through the mind. Okay, and we call that associated thoughts. We also have chain reaction of associated thoughts. So imagine that I'm looking at my wedding ring. It takes me back. I got married in Canada, so I would go back to Canada. My thought from Canada might go to my mother-in-law who made us a wonderful dinner. I might think of the recipe, chain reaction of associated thoughts. That's how we think, okay? We jump, okay, in a chain reaction, but it's all associated. It's all tied up. It's all linked up, okay? So now, what is the, I'm gonna show you a slide through share screen. So can you see this iceberg, everyone? We can't see the slide. You can't? No, oh. we can see that you're sharing the slide, but we can't see the slide. Okay, now can you see it? Not yet? No. Yeah, now we can. Now we can. Okay, so Western psychologists, and there is a connection between the Vedas I don't There's know what's happening, but I cannot see it on my screen. I can see it on Facebook, but I can't see it on this screen, which means the recording will have a problem. Could you, okay. could you please um, do it once again so that we really have the recording which goes well along with it? What, just, what would just, you like me just, to do? Just undo it and do it back okay. again. And go back. Yes, thank you. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, I can't see it still. Okay, that's fine, go ahead. Okay, just imagine an iceberg, okay? The tip of the iceberg is the conscious mind. Okay, how would you define the conscious mind? How would you define the subconscious mind? How would you define the super conscious? Anyone has heard of these terms? They're important because I will now show you the connection between meditation and what happens in terms of the mind. So the conscious mind, okay, think of everything happening in the now, what you're aware of. So right now, okay, you're aware there's an iceberg picture, you're aware of my voice, you're aware um, that we are on Zoom, Whatever you are focused on and aware, on, aware about is the working of your conscious mind. Okay, everyone understand that? So your thoughts in the now are the workings of your conscious, but the conscious mind is only 10% of your potential mind. So what's the potential mind? The subconscious. We call it chitta. Okay, Manas is conscious, Chitta in Sanskrit. Sub subconscious is every single thought from the beginning of time is stored like your hard drive. It is stored in your subconscious. So the past moment is also in your every single thought from the beginning of time. And if you believe in past lives, Every experience, every thought, every word, every interaction is stored in the hard drive. 95% of us are operating from the subconscious because thoughts keep bubbling up and we get triggered through association and then we get reactive. Okay? What is the superconscious? 
The superconscious is the God self or atomic self or divine self. At the core, the mind, we are all connected to the cosmic mind. And therefore, someone like Vinayfa, someone who practices meditation like me, we develop our intuitive because what happens in meditation, you are shutting down the conscious mind, you're moving through the subconscious and you're expanding the, what I call atomic self or divine self. The atomic or divine self is very intuitive. It's the wisdom of all that is. So you can actually connect with anybody in the world and find information if, of course, permission and all that has to be given, but you can tune in to the wisdom of the universe in, through what we call the superconscious. So can you think of an example of your superconscious mind working? How many of you think you have the ability I'm going to stop share. How many of you think you have the ability or have experienced your superconscious mind functioning? Anyone? Yeah. So Anu, can you share an example of the superconscious or the atomic self working? So I have constantly known what's going to happen. It's like it's premonition. Like, yeah. A lot of that. Good. Happens. Okay, so premonition, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, all these abilities, we all have the potential to get. How? Through the practice of meditation. Anu, probably you are thinking of some people have it from birth. How come? That's because they have practiced meditation for many lifetimes. And so they are born with that ability. Okay. But all of us have the potential. Okay. Of developing all these abilities. It's a question of training. So what is the training of meditation in relation to the mind? You're shutting down the conscious. So you're moving from many thoughts to one thought to no thought. What's happening to the body? The body is moving into no awareness state okay so you will feel numb you won't know where your fingers end and your toes end you won't be conscious whether you're in australia or you're in india so you lose awareness of the human identity we call that losing body consciousness okay and you float from the conscious through the subconscious and you tap the atomic self and you expand the atomic self functioning. So why is it that sometimes some people when they're meditating, they get fearful or they get a past life thought or they get because they're passing through the subconscious. So it's very important when you meditate that you connect without fear. And so it's helpful, beneficial if you have a divine master or a spiritual master or a guru when you're meditating or you protect yourself like I did, put you in a beautiful golden circle of light because we are traveling through an inner journey. And if you do believe in past lives, okay, some past life memories can pop up. And if we've had on an average a thousand lifetimes, they're not all good memories. Sometimes we can come across not so good memories. Okay, so protection is very important. So now I'm going to make you do a meditation exercise. Okay, and then I'll give you the theory. Yes. Anya, you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. When I meditate, a lot of the times, uh, I have water running down my whole body. I get so hot inside and I don't know what it is. It's, and, and I have my nose is all wet, my face is wet and enormous heat inside. What's that? So meditation is many things. It is generating energy. We are vibrational beings. We don't have time today, but 
I usually, you know, cover a lot in many sessions and some of the things I cover are we are vibrational beings, we are energy, we have a chakra system, we have a spiritual anatomy. Okay? You are activating certain spiritual parts of your being. Okay. So we do getting disturbance. Uh, so someone's audio is on. But Anya, I would have to individually um, do an assessment with you to find out why that's happening. But all I can say to you is that we are vibrational beings, okay? If you're not protected, some people go into fear. If you're going into heat, you need to understand why that's happening okay um, if it's uncomfortable you need to take measures to stop that process there are many things but i don't want to uh, get stuck on that because we have a lot to cover in the group so you can contact me individually and we'll talk about that Thank okay you. some people get stuck for example i had a 60 year old woman okay she was doing um, um, a form of shifting the energy from muladhar which is the base chakra to the crown chakra and she felt she was getting stuck in her throat these things happen and therefore you need supervision and guidance okay the more you meditate the more deeper you go okay it's good to have someone who has got experience so we're getting area. some messages on the facebook meeta says that uh, it's a fear of grounding helps a lot She's also talking about navel chakra and getting balanced to remove excess of heat. And uh, yeah, so there are, there are many people who are joining us on the Facebook who are also sending there. And she's now saying grounding is the root chakra. That's just wanted to read the comments for you. Yeah, sure. So there are many things. Okay. So, but I, I wouldn't give you guide advice. Okay, because advice is adding vice. I'm only giving you a limited perspective. I don't know enough about what you're doing, how you're doing, okay, to give you individual guidance right now. Okay, but Thank you. whatever she's saying, there are many possibilities, okay? Mm -hmm. the possibilities are you're not grounded, you're going into fear, okay, you're creating heat because of a past life memory. It could be a lot of things, okay? So we won't go into that now because I don't know enough about you. Okay, any other questions about the theory we've covered in terms of what is meditation? So now we're going to look at actually experience a meditation exercise. And then I'm going to go through your experience and call out what are the steps in meditation, okay, every time. What are the blocks that you'll have? Why some people go deeper and others don't? Okay, what is the way to go deeper and how I can improve my practice? Okay, so if we have enough time for that, we'll try and cover as much as we can. So I just okay. want you to know time is not a big deal. Uh, okay. Just continue with what you need to do. Thank you. Okay, but you need to have some time as well, right, Anu? At the end? Of course, of course. But just saying as much you can cover, cover. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So roughly we are finishing what, in another hour? Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's try and do as much as we can. So if you want to stretch, because now we're going to do a little mini meditation exercise. So if you want to stretch or if you want to stand up and then settle yourself down in a comfortable posture. So the spine needs to be erect. The hand position or mudra, have it in a receiving mudra, chin mudra. Once again, gently close your eyes. Ask for 
pure divine energy, source energy to be present. Always ask for protection, so visualize a beautiful golden circle of light around us. Ask for awareness, growth in consciousness, love, wisdom, healing. I want you to now watch your breath. So as you're watching your breath, take deep breaths and try and let go your busy monkey mind. And when other thoughts come up, you have to keep going back to the breath. Just like a mother teaches the child to focus on the homework and not to get distracted, you have to keep going back to the one thought which is your breath. You are letting go all other thoughts, but focused on only the one thought, the inhalation and the exhalation. And now I want you to visualize the breath as sky blue in color. a calming, peaceful color. And you're going to visualize taking this breath inwards to various parts of your being. As the breath touches the top of your head, See all the muscles and all the body parts relax. See the muscles in the head space letting go, surrendering. Become aware if there's any tension, any heaviness in the head, Keep directing that sky blue energy from your breath. And surrendering and letting go with each exhalation. Direct the breath to the eyes, as if you're bathing the eyes. The eyeballs drop into the eye socket, completely relaxed. The eyelids become heavy. Keep directing the breath. 
to the years, to the entire face, mouth. See the tongue drop on the lower palate. It's like having a gentle inner massage, relaxing all the muscles, all the body parts. Take the breath to the neck region, the throat, as the breath spreads the energy soothes and relaxes. Keep directing the breath to the shoulder blades. Let go all the burdens you've carried through the day. Relaxing all the body parts. The shoulder blades, the arms, right down to the fingertips. You're breathing this beautiful sky blue energy, relaxing the body parts. as the breath flows through. Take the breath further down to the chest region. Near the heart center. further down to the solar plex region, stomach area. All the organs are surrendering, returning to its normal peaceful functioning. Take the breath further down to the pelvic region. Directing that beautiful soothing sky blue energy further down the hips, the thighs. further down the calves, the ankles, the toes. Visualize the breath moving from head to toe in a slow, peaceful rhythm, bringing balance, harmony, healing to your being. I'm going to leave you in silence. Just enjoy the experience.
We're going to now slowly but surely come back to the conscious mind. So watch the breath again. Become aware of your body parts. Become aware of your surroundings. Never jump into activity, but slowly, surely, move from that deep relaxed state back into the conscious mind before you open your eyes go into gratitude to source energy to divinity to those spiritual beings that have been there protecting you moving at your own, own pace, only when you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. Okay, so is everyone back to the conscious mind? So how many of you were able to, what I call move into the zone where you didn't feel, you didn't realize your fingers were here, your nose was there, where you lost consciousness of the body, where you became numb, where you lost consciousness of the time, 
how many of you moved into that peaceful, what I call zone? You can just put your thumbs up. That's good. What blocks most people from getting there? And then we'll look at the stages. What blocks us from going deeper? I told you what the mind is. The meditation is transcending. It's a journey moving deeper and deeper. Okay? So what is blocking you? So what are some of the blocks that you all experienced in this exercise that wouldn't take you to this deep place? Come on, you have to be interactive. Nobody had any blocks? Everyone was perfectly meditating? For me, it's from the past. Yeah, Anya is speaking and then I'll go to Rati. Yes, Anya? For me, I had a little bit of a problem with the color blue. Okay, uh, good. I, I was seeing more white, but not blue. And then for, no, for a while, I was trying to concentrate on blue, but I couldn't see blue. Okay, wonderful. So you had a sensory block, okay? So certain processes and certain guided meditations take you to an association. Remember, mm -hmm. the subconscious, your hard drive. Mm -hmm. And you obviously have some connection or uh, association with blue. So you didn't want to go there and you preferred white. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Become aware, okay, of what that block was. It was a sensory block. It was a block of you not feeling good because you had an association with the color blue, okay? Which was not absolutely good for you, okay? Yeah, but I didn't feel bad about it, you know, I just no, said- you, you just preferred it, and yeah. that's preference. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Okay, you chose to go into what? That's fine. Okay. Okay, anyone else? So what you're saying is you didn't follow my guidance, but you did your own thing and you used white light and that's fine okay, okay? as long as you were able to transcend into a deeper place mm -hmm. it's not it's not about what thought you have it's if you understand the stages you're moving from many thought to mm -hmm. one thought mm -hmm. to no thought mm -hmm. okay and i'll give you an analogy to make you understand the stages but right now i'm trying to get your experience mm -hmm. so Rati, what did you get? What did you say in terms of a block? I can't hear you because your audio is off. Yeah, now you can talk. I've unmuted you. Uh -huh. uh, initially, I could follow your instructions, whatever you said. But then later when you were silent, I started getting thoughts from the past. But then I decided not to focus on them. And it was to work towards the very end that I reach that state of no thoughts. Wonderful. So, R Rati is giving us exactly what we need to do in meditation. We need to go neti neti, not this thought, not this thought, not this thought, go back to this. One thought or no thought. Okay, that's exactly what we do. Like I told you, if I was given a project in my in my university, okay, and I had some written work to do. Does the whole world stop for me? Does everyone stop talking around me? My colleagues stop having cups of coffee and tea? Does the traffic on the, on the street stop because I have to do my project? What is it that makes me accomplish anything? Concentration? Contemplation, concentration, merger state to samadhi. That is what the steps of meditation are. It is about you wanting and willing. And so the first step of meditation is your intention. Anything in life, whether it's wanting to learn how to drive a car or get a job or your whatever you want to manifest, 
the first step is obviously divine will the cosmic will the universal will needs to be in alignment with your will but your intention needs to be 100 percent if I'm sitting there thinking about what I'm having for dinner or what my husband is doing or what my children are doing, will I finish my project? Will I actually be meditating or I'll be just pretending to meditate? So most of us go through the motions of it, but we're not 100% in I will and I want. Okay. So, I give you an analogy so that you, this makes sense, the steps. Okay, so emotion, we are looking at the blockages. I'll go very quickly through them. Some people might have had a fight with someone and then meditate, emotional distraction. Okay, some might get distracted with the music they're not used to. They like a Western sound. They don't like the chanting of the Indian chanting. Some like, um, you know, might get distracted with um, incense. Some might get distracted with thoughts. So there are lots of blockages. But the keys to meditate, obviously you need to have the will. To have will is also about having a certain discipline. A discipline is not punishment, it's a system in place. Okay, it's a practice. And the more you practice, the more you'll get there. The more you'll just slip into the zone. Okay, so I usually use this analogy so that you understand the steps. We have Sana who is Imagine. asking, Sana is there, who said over here, she's saying she has little pain in her right hand and uh, she was not able to see blue color. So she just shared on the chat. Okay, so obviously your awareness grows that much more because usually where are we? In the monkey mind, we're in the outer world. Okay, we rarely pay attention to what's happening in our inner world. Okay, and like I said to Anya, it wasn't important that you saw the blue color. Okay, if you had a preference to see any other color, that's fine. I usually don't ask people to see a blue color. I say choose any color. But the whole idea was for you to travel to different body parts, okay, to relax your body. And usually blue for many people is associated with peace and calm because it's a cooling energy, okay, in... Um, pranic healing, for example, blue is used for cooling energy. Okay, but we won't go into blue. Can I share, can I ask this question, I'm Raksha? Yeah. Okay, so uh, not having a will is also a blockage. Yes, because if say I have to go into the laws of manifestation to make you understand this. If anything you want to do, whether it's meditation, drive a car, or have a boyfriend, or have a sandwich. Let's look at the mundane example of a sandwich. What's the first thing I need if I said, is it Raksha? Yes, 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 Raksha. Raksha, if I asked you for a sandwich, what was the first thing you do? Raksha? Yeah. Any manifestation was the first ingredient you need? Mine. You need, you, you need to say, I will make yeah. Rosanna a sandwich. Yeah. You might not want to make me a sandwich. Yeah. But if the universe is not in tune with your will, you won't have a sandwich. Imagine there's a tsunami. There's no bread. There's no flour. Would you have a sandwich? No. So divine will, my will, intention is very important. And it has to be 100%. I cannot th say, oh, no, I will have a pani puri, bhel puri. No, I don't think I'll have a sandwich. If you are wishy-washy, that's why meditation is so powerful. If you really use it in your everyday life. 
because it's teaching you and training you how to think, how to manifest, how to co-create with the creator and yeah. not miscreate. Okay, so once I have, I am having a sandwich and divine will is there, bread is available, cheese is available, what happens next? Raksha? I make, I have to get up and make. Think again. Think again, if I was born in the Amazon jungle and I'd never seen a sandwich, how would I make? Planning. Half of us fail in the planning. We don't know what is, and we're not realistic. Okay? So I have to know that there's bread and there's butter and then there's cheese. I have to know the process. I have to know the recipe. Similarly, when I go out for a job. Similarly, with meditation. Everything has a system in place. We can call it discipline or a system or a process right yeah what's the last element that's needed you mentioned it action action but it has to be consistent persistent action because what do we do oh no i you know i'm i'm distracted i'm going to the kitchen to make you a sandwich but somebody calls me or the radio is on or the tv is on do i reach my goal no same with meditation, okay? We start thinking about what we're doing tomorrow. You're not really meditating, you're just yeah. pretending to. Okay, you can fool yourself. Can you fool yourself? Mm. Okay, so no. let me go into an analogy to make you really understand the steps of meditation. Imagine, think of a really uh, excellent movie that you saw in a cinema. Okay, so I'll just use Braveheart because I can't think of any nice Hindi movie at the moment. Okay, so you, what's the first thing you do if you want to go and see this movie? What's the first thing you do? Come on, Raksha. You plan. Gonna... You plan. You plan. You organize. Always. If the universe doesn't want you to see a movie, will the movie ha be there? No. It may not be showing. Yeah. Okay, what's the next thing? My intention. My husband says, no, sit at home and look after the kids. And I said, no, I'm nope. going to the movie. Yeah. Okay, my will, thy will. Okay, step number one. Now imagine I am choosing to go to a theater very far away and it's not in a nice area and it's late in the night. Do I need protection? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do I need to be prepared? Yes, we have yes. a preparation towards moving to merger state. Yes. Okay, so I, I have to make sure I have money in my pocket. I have a phone so I can ring up if I'm in a state of emergency in any way. Preparation, I have to buy the ticket. You see people walking into the theater choosing where they're going to sit. They don't want to sit next to someone who's eating popcorn. They don't want to sit next to someone who's noisy. So we make preparation happen. Okay. Then have you seen what, what do people do when they're watching the movie? They slump into their chair. Some people might have a drink on one side, popcorn on the other side, take their shoes off. The body is completely surrendering, relaxing. But what happens when the main attraction starts they start focusing, focusing and the focusing they're understanding where's the plot who's the hero who's the heroine what's happening here and then they reaches a stage of one pointedness when you become the character in the movie that's called the merger state. When you and divine energy become one, you go into a blissed out state. Yeah, you lose the body conscious. You don't think about the husband. You don't think about the stomach hungry. You don't think about, you know, someone in the fifth aisle is eating popcorn. You're not aware of where you are. You might be transported to England if the movie is in England. So true. That is merger state so can you understand the analogy yes 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 
thank you. This is this is good. I'll never forget. Very nice. Good. That's why thank I always you. use examples. Okay, so it's important for us to understand. Okay, what meditation is. So what have I covered so far? What is meditation? Steps in meditation. Blockages to meditation. Now they could be meditations that are there there are two main pathways types of meditation okay most people think especially in the western world that meditation is only about connecting to a higher power it's about relaxation it's about maybe healing but there is another very important purpose to meditation that is not really ventured into, maybe because people don't realize or find it difficult. And that pathway is called Atma Vichar. My spiritual teacher, it's like, what is Atma Vichar? It is self-inquiry. So meditation has an aspect of sifting out, okay? life's complications, realizing who you are, where you are, where you want to go, what is the ultimate purpose. Atma Vichar literally translates as inquiry of the soul. And not many meditation practitioners actually encourage this. It's a very important part, and I'll tell you why. Imagine you were in kindergarten, okay? And you at that, somebody taught you the alphabet, someone taught you mathematics, simple, you know, plus and minus, and you made many mistakes and no one corrected you. And you were pushed up to grade one, grade two, grade three. You kept accumulating mistakes, but nobody corrected you. You landed up in HSC. How do you think you would fare? I won't fare, but I'm lost. And that's what humanity is doing. We're not regularly correcting our thoughts. We are creating so much of negative thinking, okay? And that's emotional management, thought management is a whole topic in itself, okay? Um, I've written two books on the subject because for me, helping people with mental health illness is all about mind management. And meditation is a very, very important part because it is training you to look at what you're creating in your reality. Because I don't know how many of you believe that whatever you think, you actually create in your reality. So if you have wishy-washy thinking, if you have negative thinking, you are miscreating in your environment. Today, the world is in chaos, okay? Why is there a virus? Because of the collective negative energy of humankind. If only we had taught our children how to think right, okay? To emotionally manage themselves. If we had a value system, because that's what meditation is, is connecting you to your true self. Your true self is who? You are a cell in the body of this divine energy. Some people in the Western world don't like the word God, but I always say to them, God is a label that human beings have used for this creator energy. You didn't create the sun, you didn't create the sky, you didn't create your breath, you didn't create your kidney moving right now, you don't create your blood moving, you don't create the sperm and the egg that creates the miracle of a child. There is an intelligence. You don't like the word God, don't use it. Use higher power, use intelligence, use whatever you want because it's the energy that we are acknowledging that is more powerful than us individual energy. So what creates the virus? What is creating climate change? Think about it. It's not someone sitting up there deciding that we need to suffer. 
It's our individual thoughts, words, and deeds that are collected. We have destroyed the Mother Earth. We have polluted the waters. We have slaughtered animals. Collectively, through the centuries, we have ignored what is important. And the results, because there is a law in the universe which says, whatever you sow, you shall reap. And all masters talk about it. So meditation is about recognizing where we are going in our thinking. And that is a whole, I am passionate about that because I think that is the solution to our problems in humanity. The problems that we're facing right now. Okay, the discrimination, where does it come from? Who taught a child? Black is bad and white is good. Were we born discriminating? What makes one religion greater than another? What makes a man greater than a woman? It's what we're fed. And if you don't have the discerning ability, which we have in meditation, in meditation, we sit down, spend time with ourselves, okay? Connecting to our higher power, getting guidance, connecting with our conscience. People are not in tune with their conscience today. They are just reactive. I am not saying another example, George Floyd, okay, with the whole newspapers, medias, terrible thing. A black man, okay, was killed. Absolutely not right. But were we reactive or were we responsive? We were reactive. Was there any need to go and loot and burn and have protests and when we are suffering a pandemic at the moment? Were we thinking forward? This ability to think forward, this ability to make decisions comes with what I call the training of Atma Vichar, which is a whole branch of meditation that needs to be taught to people. How to get guidance, how to connect with your conscience, how to make the right decisions, because every thought, word, and deed that you think of is going to have a consequence for you. If not in this life, I promise you in another life, lifetime. We're seeing it right now, but people don't take responsibility. Even right now, people are blindsided to climate change. They don't see the destruction that humanity has collectively done. And it's, you know, like the horse blinkers, we have blinkers on. But when you start meditating, you start seeing the bigger picture. You start wanting to make sh shifts in your consciousness because we're all connected. At that core, when you reach the core, where all of us are connected, we're in the matrix of energy. You understand that we will only survive if all our brothers and sisters survive. And love starts becoming the most important ingredient, unconditional love for all our brothers and sisters. So, do we have time for another exercise or do you, Anu, want to take over because I'm not sure of what the timing situation is? Uh, how long will it take? How much time do you need? Um, uh, 15, 20 minutes or? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And we'll do it after okay. that. I just wanted so, to end it with sound because this, the topic is the same. So it'll help everyone to kind of get even more deeper. Thank you. Okay. So let's do another exercise so that you understand who you really are. So I want you to, if you're in a cold country, my, I'm in a cold country and the heater is not on, I might like to rub my hands. Okay, to bring it to body temperature. But you don't need to do it in India where it's really hot. What I want you to do is put your hands 
in this kind of position. Okay. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to move from many thoughts to one thought. And the one thought you're going to have is that there is a magnet, a strong, strong magnet. A magnet that will attract. Okay, both here. I'm going to chant a simple OM to keep the energy and vibration. What you need to do is focus on this magnet. And I want you to go into the visualization and the belief that the magnet is so powerful that it's actually attracting. I want you to allow, not force and not physically bring your hands together, but allow whatever happens. Okay, be in the state of completely surrendering and allowing. Oh. Oh. Completely let go of your body. I'm moving you to a deeper state. So let go of the body. Ten. Completely relax, let go the mind, nine. Try to go in a state of nothingness, eight. Moving deeper and deeper, seven. Moving still deeper, six. Deeper and deeper, five. Concentrate only on the magnets and nothing else, four. Moving you still deeper and deeper, three. Deeper and deeper, two. Let go all other distractive thoughts. Let go the body, let go all thoughts outside of this is a magnet and it's attracting each other. Two, one, as I chant the Om, allow the magnets to attract each other. the hands are together visualize and imagine there's super glue and actually it's the hands are so tightly jammed together visualize that even if you want to release the hands you found get into the experience Try and not think of any other thoughts. Just focus one pointedly. At the count of three, you'll be able to open your hands. One, two, three. Okay, so how many of you felt any vibration when you did that? Anything? What did you feel? What was your experience? I felt tingly in my fingers. Yeah. Like, like some kind of energy going through the hand. Okay, great. Thank you. Arti, you had your hand up. Arti. Yeah. So I felt a strong heat kind of thing, energy and heat coming up from the center of my palms. Great. Anyone else felt anything? 
Yes, Katie. Um, I felt a very prickly sensation on my palms, and particularly at the uh, agya fingertips. There was a distinct sensation of like having pins and needles. It was uh, okay. So this is just. This, the purpose of this exercise is manifold. One is to recognize that you are vibration. You are vibrational beings. Every time you meditate, you're shifting your vibration to come back into the alignment of source energy vibration. Okay? Number two, this is a very good exercise for concentration. How to move from many thoughts to one thought to no thought. Okay? It is also very helpful because to understand that finally meditation is about, we say, what's the end purpose of meditation? What do you think is the end purpose? Relaxation is a byproduct. Good health is a byproduct. But what is the end goal of meditation? What do you think? Which is the end goal of your life purpose yes scarcity uh, i would say <clears throat> just as prayer is talking to god meditation is listening to the answer but listening towards what purpose uh, to any uh, prayer for some to prayer for somebody is good and okay so so, yes, that is another reason for meditation, but merger with final, God. It's about merger with divinity. And you don't have to die to merge, you can do it in the body. You can be one with your creator in thought, word, and deed. You can be in alignment with your creator because we are the wave, the creator is the ocean. We have every characteristic, trait, energy, element that the creator has. It's just that we've come into this human body for an experience, a human experience. And some human experiences distort our energy, take our energy away, separate. I call it the separated state and the merger state. So when we are in the merger state, we are intuitive, we are creative. We are purposeful, we are productive, not only for ourselves, but for all our brothers and sisters all over and all the creations of the planet. You understand that? When we are distorted, when we are separated, that's when we are creating conflict, anger, sadness, fear. There are only two states of being really, fear and unconditional love. And fear is the reason for violence. Fear is the reason for discrimination. Fear is the reason for superiority complex. So meditation has the answer because we have a very powerful element of Atma Vichar, which is constantly monitoring understanding the flow of your vibration because your emotions are vibrational energy of negative emotions are distorted vibrations understanding the what is happening within you and managing that so that you become a co-creator with source energy and with that i say namaste I bow to the divinity within each one of you. I thank you for the opportunity. I thank Anu, who's been very kind in giving me this opportunity. And I thank all of you. Um, and I hand over because she wants to do some, something thank you, on thank sound. You, thank you so much for this amazing session. We just, I'm going to take you through the journey of sound from here for about 20 minutes. And then we will meet in the evening. Uh, evening, we have uh, three sessions. Uh, two are with the uh, two girls who, not young ladies, I would say. They really inspire me. And I really want them to be on the uh, 
um, platform speaking about themselves. And then we have Uzma Sayed who will be doing mandala uh, drawing with us. In case anybody wants to join, you're most welcome. Uh, if you need to reach me and reach the links for the next program, take down my number. My country code is yeah. 91. Country code is 91. And my number is 99-99308-98116. I repeat again, in the evening we have uh, Mandela drawing and inspirational stories. So if you want to connect to that program in the evening, connect with my number and send me a message and I'll send you the link. My number is plus nine one nine nine three zero eight nine eight one one six. Wonderful. Um, I will put my email there. Please for go anyone ahead. who will I will with me. I will also be creating the YouTube of today's program. Um, and you can then connect with it. Um, we'll send it across. I will send it across to Huzen and she can share it with all of you. Or you can go straight on my channel, Anu Mehta, and uh, get connected with many other talks that have happened. We've had about 96 talks before this. So 